<laughs> Yo, what's up? This is DJ Speedster. You're more than welcome to call me Speedster, bro. You're watching Car Culture on Cars.coza. <laughs> Back in the bar on Sunday nights, we used to go to a certain road in Vienneging. And, um, you know, I remember my friends used to have like velocities. They would go against other velocities, robot to robot. And that also brings in a sound. There was that crazy sound in their velocities. It was always too loud, too much bass. And they always never had boots because their boots were full of subs. That, that, that's what I remember about the sound. I was like, this is too loud. People sticking out the window while the car is spinning. Uh, lots of whistling and hyping up going on. A big party after. Uh, I remember I played at a couple of the, the, the V-Dub fests and um, that was quite something. That's what I think about when you say uh, car culture. If you've been growing up in the hood, whatever, or the first thing you want to do when you make it is you want to go back to the hood with your car. Um, it's, it's a sign of like, I've made it kind of a thing, which is sometimes a problem because guys buy the most craziest cars to go show off back at the hood. But then like, you know, the other parts of their life aren't quite, you know, aligning. But I think it's a, a sign of um, um, success, a, a sign of, you know, you've, you, you've made it. Most people didn't have cars, you know, so they can only get their, their first car when they've done their first job. You know, they've had to go through school, uh, taking taxis and then you get a job and then you can afford a car and that's the first thing you do you buy a car and you take it home and you say guys I've bought a car and it's like a sign of like I've made it my dad was very big on cars we always had like the coolest cars ever and um, I remember when he had a Z3 when they just come out I think this must have been 2002 2003 my mom would want to drop me off at school she was at the time driving the 5 series but I'd always insist that my dad drops me off at school cuz like everyone sees you and it's and it's really really cool so I think that's my fondest memory of being in the car when my when my dad had the Z3 a friend of mine had a Uno which is actually the car I learned how to drive in. My parents didn't even teach me how to drive I taught myself how to drive I was uh, 15 so what happened was um, I used to ride four wheelers a lot. My dad bought me a four wheeler, which is a manual four wheeler. So I understood the concept of the clutch and changing gears. And we were on a mission once skating with one of my friends and, and he hurt himself and it was just him and I. And he was like, you have to drive home. So I had to there and there learn how to drive. So I, that was the Uno. Um, and that's how I learned how to drive. And then I was stealing cars from home when they were gone. So by the time I stole the car and I scratched it, they were like, how do you know how to drive? And I explained the bike story and then they were, yeah, very shook. I've had a, quite, a, quite a couple of cars. My dad uh, bought me a Yaris. That was my first car, a metric. I got a A3. Uh, that was the first car I bought from like DJing money. And then from an A3, I got a Golf 5 TSI. Then from a Golf 5 TSI, I had a, a Polo GTI. The Polo GTI was the first like cool car I'd bought for myself outside of the A3. I even had a number plate at the time when we were doing a V Entertainment, number plate was the guy, GP. I thought I was the guy. That was like my coolest car. From there, I got a, a Hyundai H1, which is like out my, my tour bus. Now that, that was the craziest car I've ever had because um, the craziest of things used to happen in that car. Uh, just being on the road, this is, you know, pre-COVID. This is like when mail was like, when I was like hot, hot, hot. <laughs> we used to do all types of things in that car. When I initially got my car, I actually had a deal with um, a certain dealership. So my car was like branded, like my name was big on my car for, for, for six months. And I hated it um, because um, I'd literally be stopped at the road and people would come like hitting my window, doing all types of weird things, you know. So I, re I got really, really like scared of people knowing what I drive and what I'm doing. Um, especially in this day and age with like social media and everything going on, I, 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 I like to just, you know, keep my, my life private and show them what they're supposed to see, which is work. Especially in hip hop space, it's a, you have to have the coolest clothes and the coolest car, you know, um, that's always been like the perception and 
you know, for in order for you to fit into a certain group and, and certain people to chill with or whatever. Uh, luckily, because like I, I come from like cars and whatever, it, it never really phased me. You know, like when I was young, I had to skate everywhere, and all I ever wanted was to rock up at the skate park like the older guys in my own car, playing music and opening your boot and getting your skateboard and your skateboard shoes out the boot. So now you're a good man, so you can do those things. Now I can do those things. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Always keep it low key, push sport on low speed. South African car culture, I think gear A10, pillar that gear A10, you can jump start it with a power bank. That's when you come to Joburg, got your first job. Gear A10, you are there. Hyundai Renault, the red one. Oh my god, iconic. Now all of these cars, it's vibrating inside. I'm like, whoa, you're tickling other things now. Let us do this thing. And I saved up, I was like. I'm going to buy either like a BMW or Mercedes and guess what? I got scammed buying my first car. Dream, search, drive. Cars.coza.